I was born September the 3rd, 1927, in Philadelphia. I was born in my, the house that I was living at. Uh, at that time, they had midwives to deliver, deliver the babies, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, and then I, um, I grew up, and as I said, my mother always spoke German, and we told her that, you know, we were Americans and she should speak English to us. <laughs> and the years went by. I mean, I went to first grade, and then I went to second grade, and I was in fifth grade the year I left for Germany. I went to Germany, and uh, with my mother and my sister, my aunt and her, my mother's sister, and her little baby who the doctors, her, was something wrong with her foot, and then the doctors in the United States couldn't fix it, but they were told that the doctors in Germany could fix it. So we all went over to see my grandmother. Mm -hmm. What <laughs> so did you go in Germany? We went to a town called Frontstetten Hullenzollen. Mm -hmm. it, it's a uh, near um, this, it's near Switzerland because on a nice day I could stand in my bedroom upstairs and see the Alps from <laughs> her house, from her window. Uh, and so anyhow, uh, when we got there, when we got over there, we didn't speak German. My mother always spoke German to us, but we told her. We are Americans, speak English to us. And so my grandmother couldn't believe that we could, we could understand everything, but we could not speak it. So my grandmother, as kids, we believed everything. My sister was five, mm -hmm. six, five or six. And so my grandmother said if we didn't learn to speak English and German, we wouldn't get anything to eat. Mm -hmm. So we didn't take us long because my mother always spoke in German to us. So it took us a couple days and we spoke German. And by the time we left there, we spoke fluent German. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was like not, probably about nine months later. What was life like living under Nazi Germany or were you not really aware of what was going on? Well, you, you had to watch what you said. You had to be very careful. Uh, because you didn't know whether your next door neighbor would turn you in for anything, so mm -hmm. you had to be very careful. But as a child, we knew no different, mm -hmm. you know. But my parent, my mother did, and my the, the my aunts and uncles all knew. They all knew what was going on. But as a child, we knew nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing you were not aware of the war. Like, what was going to happen? No, we were kids, you know, and we weren't thinking, 11, 12 years old, you're not going to think, you know, mm -hmm. oh, what's going to happen, you know. So we just went on life singing and mm -hmm. walking through the, the woods and picking berries and whatnot, you know, mm -hmm. and bringing them home to my grandmother to fix things with, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, we had a... It, it was wonderful, you know, I mean, but it was hard on them, you know, because the, they knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. Then my mother noticed that something was kind of wrong, and she said to her brother, what's going on? And he said, you can't talk, he said, because you don't know who your neighbor is. So he said, when Hitler, when Hitler talks, they have to go, they didn't have a, a newspaper. They either had a town crier that came around, but if, if hit, and, and every night and read the news to you, rang the bell and everybody went out and listened to him, and he told you what was going on. Then when Hitler gave a speech, all the men were required to go to the, the bar mm -hmm. and listen to him. 
And so the bar was right there in town too, right practically across the street from my grandmother's. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anyhow, we lived there through the summer. It was a beautiful summer. Uh, and I used to take walks, I met friends, and I'd go through the woods singing with them in German too. And uh, my grandmother would give us money to buy candy mm -hmm. and whatnot to take on the road. And uh, so then it was time for us to leave, and we really didn't want to go. So we got the train, and my aunt stayed there with the baby because she had to go to a different section in Germany and stay with her husband's family because they knew this doctor. So we went to, um, we got on a train and we rode, I can't remember, but it seemed like a day and a night mm -hmm. to get through to the other part of Germany because uh, they didn't have the fast trains that they have mm -hmm. now, you know. So anyhow, we got there and we went to check in at the ship and then they told us, they said, no, there's no ship leaving today. They said, go and stay in the hotel. Maybe tomorrow there'll be a, a ship going out. Mm -hmm. So we got, we stayed in a hotel that was run by, it must have been some kind of a convent because it was run by nuns. And uh, so then my mother, would, we went back the next day to the ship, and they said, no, no. And so my mother said, well, what are we going to do, you know? And they said, well, you need to go to the American Council. And so my mother went there, and they said, oh, well, don't worry. We will get the children back, but we don't know what's going to happen to you because you're not a citizen of the United States and you're not a, you were out of Germany too long, you lost your German citizenship. So they said, you're a woman without a country. So she said, oh my, you know. So anyhow, uh, it, it, when it happened, she was supposed to get her, she was gonna be, become an American citizen the day we were sailing to Germany. Mm -hmm. And she called them and said, I, uh, she called him a couple of days before and said, I'm going to be leaving and I have an appointment and uh, I'll be out, of, I'll be gone then. And they said, that's all right, don't worry. See, nobody knew that this was going to happen, the war, you know. Mm -hmm. They said, don't worry, you can come when, the, when, the, um, when you come back, you come back and we'll reschedule your appointment. So my mother went to the American Council, like I said, and they said they would get us back. Or they would get my sister and I back, but they didn't know what was going to happen to her. So we went and they, we went back to the hotel, and the next morning, the nuns came knocking at the door and said, hurry, hurry, get up. The this, this ship is leaving, and it's going to be the last ship to leave to go back to the United States. So we got on it, and mm -hmm. we got home. And by that time, we had forgotten our German, our English. So we couldn't go back to school right away. <laughs> so the nuns told my mother to just bring some of the friends around. And, and then it was in a, a week, we were back to being able to speak English again. <laughs>